In this video, I want to talk about how we go about doing inference when we're using IV estimators. So the idea is we have a linear model between y and x, and because of endogeneity between x and the error, we are using an instrument for our independent variable x. And we want to talk about how we actually go about doing inference in these sorts of situations. Well, it turns out that if we assume that our instrument is a good instrument, so we have that the covariance between z and epsilon is equal to zero, and the covariance of z with x does not equal zero, then it turns out under these two assumptions that in large sample sizes, beta hat iv is sort of approximately normal and it's centered around the true value beta with some sort of variance, which we're going to talk about in this video. So just like the least squares estimator is asymptotically normally distributed, so is the IV estimator. And that should come as no great surprise because there's quite a lot of symmetry between IV estimators and least squares estimators. So in these contexts, you can just go ahead and use the normal T and F statistics like you would do for inference when we're doing least squares regression. However, in this video, I want to talk about what are the factors which affect this variance term here. And if we assume one extra thing in addition to the Gauss-Markov conditions, then we can actually write down the explicit form of this variance, or at least an estimator for that variance. And it turns out that the one extra thing which we need to assume is kind of analogous to the homoscedasticity assumption for least squares estimators. So we have to assume that the expectation of our error squared, actually I should keep the notation the same, so error squared, given our instrument now z, has to be equal to a constant, sigma squared. So note that this is exactly the same form as our heteroscedasticity assumption, except the fact that we've now replaced x, our independent variable, with z. So if we assume this in addition to the homoscedasticity assumption, then it turns out that we can actually derive an estimated variance for beta hat iv. So the estimated variance of beta hat iv is equal to our estimator for sigma squared, which we write sigma hat squared, which we've derived in a long time ago in previous videos, divided through by the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar, all squared, so that's just the total sum of squares in x, divided through by the r squared from the regression of x on z. So the, this particular r squared is coming about because in our first stage of our regression, when we're doing IV estimation, we regress x on our instrument z, and this r squared which we have here is just the r squared which we would get by running this regression here. Okay, so that's the estimated variance of beta hat iv. Well, how does it actually compare with the estimated variance of beta hat least squares? Well, it turns out that the estimated variance of beta hat least squares, if we assume that the Gauss-Markov conditions are true, is equal to sigma hat squared divided through by the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar, all squared. And again, we proved that in previous videos. And note the similarity between this with the estimated variance of beta hat iv. Essentially, the only difference is because of this term here on the right-hand side of beta hat iv. And note that also, because of the fact that r squared xz has got to be, be in practice between 0 and 1, that the estimated variance of beta hat iv is greater than the estimated variance of beta hat least squares. So that's definitely something to bear in mind when we're sort of thinking about whether we should go with an IV estimator because of the fact that, especially if we have a very weak instrument, our instrumental variables estimated variance can be significantly greater than that of the least squares estimator. And it actually makes it more, more important for IV estimators to have a much larger sample size, so to increase this total sum of squares term which we have here on the bottom. And again, just to reiterate, if we have a very, very weak instrument, so 
essentially this delta 1 in this regression here is equal to 0, well, that implies that the r squared from this regression is going to be very, very small, and it's going to be around 0. So when I take 1 and divide that by something which is very, very small, the estimated variance of beta hat IV is going to blow up. So when we have a weak instrument, our variance of our IV estimator is going to be very, very high and much, much greater than beta hat least squares. So again, that's something which we need to think about. And that makes a lot of sense when we've got a weak instrument, right? Because if we've got a very, very weak instrument, so there's only a very weak correlation of between Z and X, then sampling error is going to affect things much more significantly.